So hi guys, welcome to Ustream. If you'd like to ask me a question, you can ask me a question through Lisa Cairns 12, which is my Skype name. Lisa Cairns 12. Um, and I, I like you to call in so I can speak to you person to person rather than writing and me answering the message. Um, and just be aware, if you ever write to me uh, in any form, whether it's through email or Skype, be aware that when you receive a lot of emails or a lot of Skype messages, sometimes it gets confusing and you get lost and I'm not meaning to be rude to people. Um, but it's, uh, it's hard to keep up with them sometimes. So if I don't reply and it's really urgent, then send it again. Um, Uh, if you'd like to order my book, you can order my book on my website. It's just been out for a few months. Very sweet. I didn't write it. It was transcribed from my talks. A lady called Judy Rumbarger did. She did a very nice job. If you want to come and meet me at any of my events, uh, the next one I'm doing is in Ibiza from the 1st to the 5th. I think it's four or five days talks. First to the fifth would imply five days of talks, Lisa. Um, and that's two a day. The next one after that I'm doing is in Nottingham, the UK, which is November the 1st. Um, that's from 11 a.m. to 5 p.m. You can find that on my website. Um, I'm also doing one in London on the 15th of November, 11 to 5 p.m. again. And I'm also doing one in Bristol, I think, on the 7th or 8th of November, that weekend. But I haven't put it on my website yet. And then I'm doing one in Prague, Czech Republic, the 27th to the 29th of November. And then a weekend retreat in England, the 15th to the 18th, in this really beautiful forest, just an hour outside of London. Um, and then I'm doing a retreat in southern Spain from the 6th to the 13th of February. So, that is that. Um, and for my Ustream events, I do them every Wednesday and Sunday. Wednesday, 8pm Central European time or Dutch time. I'm, not exactly sure what the time changes. So Dutch time, 8 p.m. And then on Sunday, 6 p.m. Dutch temp time. Be aware that sometimes I won't make all the talks as I'll be doing live talks in other countries. So always check my website to make sure I'm doing them that day on the um, online section. Mm. The reason I was unsure about Central European time, Ramon, was because what happens when the clocks change? Is it still Central European time? Or is it Central European time plus one? one? I don't understand how that works. It's so confusing all the time zones. Because um, I think we have a time change in a couple of weeks. Okay. Yes. Oh, Central European time changes with the clock changes. Okay, so um, my Skype talks are at 8 p.m. Central European time on Wednesday and uh, Central 6 p.m. Central European time on Sunday.
life always is as it is. It's very simple. The nature of life is to always be in movement and non-movement simultaneously. In the world of the apparent things, it's always changing from one thing to another, one thing to another. Everything is always changing. When the body looks one way, it's a whole different things. And then also when we drink or we eat or we watch things, there's always movement and change happening. The world of things is perpetual movement, which means there aren't any fixed things. There is always movement. <clears throat> and then the other side to that movement is non-movement. Isn't that crazy? In order for there to be movement, there has to be non-movement. There has to be stillness. In order for there to be light, there has to be dark. In order for there to be up, there has to be down. This stillness, though, is covered by the illusion of self. This non-movement, this non-existence is covered by this illusion of being somebody. The illusion of self thinks that this is really real and that somebody's having an experience. That somebody is in relationship with what's happening. And it's crazy because that energetic contraction of the illusion of self makes it feel like this is only moving, that this is only happening. And the non-happening is covered. This is really real. And this energetic contraction of self, that this is happening to someone, kind of feels like the back of things. It feels like something really real, me, me, this illusion of self, which is this body and these ideas and these belief systems and these actions. So something real is experiencing an external real world and it's in relationship with a real world. And it makes it feel like there are two things happening. There is a subject and an object. There is somebody in relationship with things. where really there is no thing happening. This is happening and not happening, but all the happening is made of the non-happening. All the things aren't actual things, they are appearances that aren't ultimately happening or separate. This is so hard to talk about. <laughs> A lady um, left my talks at the weekend because she said I was too intellectual. Too complicated. So this person that's in relationship with things feels real. It makes life feel like it's really happening and that it's divided, that it's separated into two. I am in relationship with the world. And as soon as this illusion of self has started, life always feels incomplete. It always feels like the person feels like it lost something because it digged. As soon as identification started, there was a separation from everything. So it lost everything. So it always has a sense of discomfort and its movement always is to try and find comfort in the world, in things. And it will always fail because there aren't things. 
that aren't ultimately things, and there isn't a somebody that could get these things. But it gets into this drama of trying to obtain things and believing that it will reach its goal, it will get to the gold at the end of the rainbow when it gets certain things, when certain things are in play. So it always thinks, I will get there when I get to these things. But this person that believes that it's going to get there never really exists, so it can never actually get there. It believes that it's the things, there's something wrong with the things, the money, the lover, the situations, the way that this is set up, that it's a cruel world, that it's not enlightened, that it can't do it correctly. But actually there's nothing there that could possibly get something. There's nobody there that could get something. And this is fantastic. But it doesn't feel fantastic for that person that feels separate. There's nobody here. But that's impossible for the person to see because to the person it is real and the world is real and that person cannot see that the world isn't real and that it's happening and not happening that it's it is and it isn't but the person can't see like that the person sees in opposites the person sees in this and that so it has to be life has to be in relationship with someone something and it has to be able to get there but you can't pick up you can't grasp as a person existence is and isn't that's non graspable for the person because it's not in time and the person exists in time the person exists in past and future in oh what shall i do in the next moment and objectifying and imagining so it has to imagine existence as something and not something it is and it isn't it has to imagine that in its way of imagining in subject object but it can't imagine that it is that way it is there isn't anyone here in relationship with anything. It's happening and it's not happening. It's happening for no one and yet it is. And this is a celebration but not to the person that wants to get somewhere. And this message completely isn't for that person. I'm not trying to wake up a person. These ideas might be relaxing for that person. That person might calm down hearing this, it might freak the person out, but it's not on that level that we're speaking. This isn't the person hearing. The person can never hear a thing. The person's in movement. The person is something moving. And all things that move aren't real. They're happening and they're not happening, but there is no thing that's a permanent. All things are in flux. So there couldn't be someone that hears because as soon as it goes into time, it's changing into something else. What would be that person that hears but an idea or an energy rising in every instance saying, I'm hearing, I'm listening. But there aren't any solid things. There's nothing which is solid. So nobody could get this. There's not anybody here or there that could get this and hear this. No, there's not a person that's ever heard anything in their whole entire life. 
People don't exist. There's nobody sitting here listening to Lisa. There's nobody speaking. There are forms appearing and not appearing. There is existence which is and isn't. It's everything and nothing. And nobody hears that and that's its joy, that's its freedom. And in these appearances, everything happens, all opposites. Beauty, ugliness, heaven, hell growth and destruction, but ultimately nothing is being destroyed or grown because there aren't any separate things. There is one energy expressing itself, giving the appearance that it's moving into lots of things. But if you got out a, um, a uh, what's that thing called? Um, you know, when you look down, um, when you look at things and that are small and it makes them bigger. I've forgotten what that thing's called. If you keep looking at everything, you'll never find the edge to anything. It's all made of the same. <clears throat> like a film when you watch it projected on the screen or on the TV. It's all made of light, lights, giving the appearance that there is definition to the objects, but ultimately it's different shades of light. All made of light. Or a cartoon, all made of pixels microscope it's called telescope microscope telescope and people are writing to me and saying telescope microscope I think it would be a microscope because telescope is I think when you look into the sky look at me all knowing suddenly I'm the idiot and then I turn to Noah This is so wonderful. This isn't happening to someone. And what's being talked about is a complete energetical shift. It's totally not intellectual. This is an energetical shift from somebody being in the center here in relationship with life. It's the end of a relationship. And then it's total freedom. And life is as it is in all its dynamics, in all its colours. It doesn't make life perfect. It doesn't make the person perfect. It is perfect because of its expression, not because of what it does. Its expression is perfect. The person could be all sorts of things. It could be having all sorts of delusions and idea, but there's no longer this contraction which says, this is me, that the person is a filter in which life looks through. It's an experience, but it's not an experiencer. There is nothing which the, ex the experiencer, and then there is everything. So this is everything speaking. This is nothing speaking. This is existence speaking. It's not a person speaking. This is total love. And that existence doesn't belong more to Lisa than to John or Jean or Martin or Jesse. It doesn't belong to anything more. It is everything. and But existence is playing a trick on itself, pretending that it's somebody else, that it's something else. It's gone full whack and really dreamt that it is something separate from everything. What's been talked about here is total freedom, but not for the person. And this isn't a cult. This isn't a religion. This isn't a dogma. This is existence speaking but not through Lisa I mean it might seem that way like it's through Lisa but this is nothing to do with which the body um, that speaks of it this is nothing to do with the body in which this message comes through Lisa is a character Lisa is interested in herself Lisa is a character that's always moving towards pleasure Lisa is not enlightened so if you look to Lisa to be enlightened, you will be highly disappointed because Lisa is just as self-centered as all the other human beings out there, totally interested in itself. But that is beautiful, just like the flower grows towards the sun and tries to beat the other flower. Same, the human tries its best to move towards its maximum amount of pleasure, even if it's helping another person. It's still because that brings pleasure. So Lisa is not enlightened. Lisa is an animal, just like all other animals. It will look after its own survival, number one. So please do not godify the messenger. The messenger 
or existence is speaking very clearly now that this is nothing to do with her. It doesn't mean that there's not coming to these talks or listening to to these these talks and enjoying the message, but it's not Lisa. In no way should Lisa be gurified or worshipped in any way. And personally, I don't even know what that means, but what's coming out, it's disgusting when non-duality teachers glorify themselves and make them into some form of guru or religion. And I really mean that. It's, it's, it, it's totally um, speaking the opposite of what non-duality truly is. Now, that doesn't mean that you can't donate. It doesn't mean that you can't send Lisa gifts. <laughs> Because if she didn't have time on her hands to speak about it, it wouldn't come through. But it's nothing to do with her. She is just as regular as every other human being and set up to move towards pleasure and be totally self-interested. But at the moment, this is the body in which existence is speaking this message through. And that's beautiful. Non-duality is beautiful. But it needs to be put really clearly that in no way is the body-mind mechanism of Lisa special. Because this belongs to everything. This is everything. It's just existence is playing in some body-mind mechanisms to have forgotten that. What's going to happen in those body-mind mechanisms is they want to feel free. They want to, they, they're set up to try and get to freedom. They're set up to, um, to look for home, but they're set up to never find it because they're always going to look in subject object, but they always have an attraction towards it. So what that body mind me that separate self is going to want to do, sorry, not body mind mechanism, what the separate self is going to do is it's going to try to make non-duality into a religion which it can get to. And it's going to try to find methods and paths to try and get to non-duality. And it never will because that game is only in subject object. That game is only ever for a person that's trying to get pleasure. So what it does is it often wants the teacher to act like a guru. It wants the teacher to say, follow me. I have the path for you and I can lead you to eternal happiness. I can lead you to bliss or I can lead you to oneness. And that's a total lie. Nobody can lead anybody to oneness because there is nobody. It's bullshit. It's created by a separate self that wants to be the top monkey, that wants to be the top dog. It wants to sit on top of its statue and have people following it. And then it, it puts the message as if that's non-duality. This is the way to non-duality. Follow me. And if you have any resistance to it, that is your ego. And that is ego defiance. And that is you fighting against uh, non-duality. And that's got nothing to do with non-duality. Non-duality is. And no one can give it to you. You can buy it off no one. You can, you can get it in, you can't get it in any one place. You can't run to, say, um, where is it that Ramana used to live? Aranachala, it won't be more there. It won't be more there if you're around a particular guru. It won't be more there if you give that guru your house and your money, although I'm always open to these offers. But it won't, nothing, it won't, you won't be able to get it in any place. None of that will get you closer to God. You closer to oneness because the you never existed and the you is not the person hearing non-duality and the you can't even deconstruct itself if that collapse is going to happen it will happen and it's got nothing to do with the appearance of you there is no continuous you there isn't a continuous person that person isn't what's listening now that person isn't what's looking Everything is listening. Everything is looking. There is simply what is. But this message will be 
unpopular because there's no monkey at the front saying, follow me. And humans are set up to follow and they're set up to work towards something. And if they don't have that dream, it's confusing for them. What do you mean I can't get there? I'm the center of the world. What do you mean you can't lead me there? And the whole time they're missing the song of this, 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 everywhere that person, that believed person goes is this, 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 total freedom. And they're not even missing it. There's, it's not even they miss it because there isn't anything there that could possibly see it. There is a filter, which is an energetic contraction saying, I'm in here, I'm experiencing life. Monkey. Okay, Bradley. You're a gorgeous nobody. Oh, thank you. Oh, it's not connecting to Bradley. Sorry, Bradley. He said he would be first, but... Oh. Hey, Bradley. Hey, Lisa. Oh, nice. In the park. In the park. Cool intro. <laughs> it was very <laughs> animated. <laughs> it was very animated. <laughs> Good to see you. Yeah, and you. I can now just see a hand. Oh, there's Bradley. Um, so, everything is it. Yeah. Including everything that appears as not it. Yeah, or, Inc and, including that energetic contraction that really feels like it's looking out at life. But that's not the looker. It's an experience appearing in life. Most people walk around believing or that is the center of the world and then the isn't part of life is covered up. Everyone's, everyone's scared of non-existence. They think, oh, non-existence is something I get to when I die, but non-existence is here. Existence needs a non-existence. There needs to be the two in order for this to happen. So it's, it's like the person then runs from this idea of non-existence because it only believes that this is real and that it's in relationship with it. <laughs> sorry, I'm outside, sorry. Um, so everything that, it, so it, you tell me if this is important, is everything that appears as not it, it or it arises in it? Is it matter? Um, well, it, it's easier to say in it sometimes with language, but no, it doesn't matter. Everything is it. And it's not really in it because there's no out of it. But it just, it's easier to say that in language sometimes, like, but, but everything equally, even the illusion of self is equally it. All the dramas of the person and the ideas and the falling and the destruction and the growth of the person is it. And there's not really a solid person ever there. It just seems that way when that contraction is there. In every instant, it's totally fresh. So nothing dies. There's nothing that could possibly die. Even that body is changing in every instant. It just feels that way because life has become only real and that separate person believes in subject-object. It believes that there is something in relationship with something else. It's such a beautiful dance. But it doesn't mean that this will improve the makeup of that person. But there's a movement from being that 
do everything and that's the freedom but it doesn't mean that the person will improve but it is a totally radical change but and it is what I would describe as just home but it it doesn't mean that the person won't do all its little dirties because the person will always still climb for pleasure and that's how we screw everyone other people over is when we're climbing for pleasure we step on other people we sometimes help them as well but you kind of like like the flower when it's trying to grow above the other it has to sort of push the others out of the way so ultimately there's being uh being free of separate self ultimately is no better than not being free of separate self ultimately ultimately but it it it, it does fundamentally change things in a way because there's nothing any more experiencing life so life goes back to being free when there's that illusion there it feels like there's something that can possibly die and it always has a sense of discomfort like shit you know i need to get somewhere i need to be something it always has this kind of running energy but ultimately that doesn't matter because even that is free as well every particle every tiny ounce of suffering is made up of total freedom but it it does seem to fundamentally change thing in that instance and then in in a sense it doesn't anymore but in that instant it changes things because life is set free again but it sounds like um like life is it was always free but it really felt like it wasn't when that person was dreaming that it was separate it's like that dream no longer veils anything the person carries on but it's no longer something which is subject to birth and death and it's no longer the experiencer of a separate world and so it's absolutely perfect to be perceiving myself or oneself as trapped yeah. or perfect not yeah to, yeah, yeah either it's, it's not the in same. The yeah, it is the same because even in that trappedness now if you feel the trappedness now or a sense of contraction now that contraction actually doesn't exist it is everywhere it's total boundlessness it goes on forever but when that person is trapped it can create very uncomfortable feelings when it goes negative the story it's not always negative it changes between positive and negative but it can tell very negative things and I think as humans we're changing really rapidly so um, we're going through a bit of an uncomfortable age like if you put any animal in the change like we've gone through in the last like 500 years it would be uncomfortable in any animal and and so the instrument in which life is being looked through is going through an uncomfortable change well it's going through a really radical change so it's a it's like um its wiring is confused. The human generally has a sense of being a bit lost because before it lived in groups and it was like following a group and belonged to a community, it's in a way, it's like in a group but in a very solitary way. We're living in these, like, we're living in a fam, nuclear families or very cut off families. Uh, sometimes even don't have family and friends, but yet we live in a city. Like, we live within amongst millions and millions of people so we're living a very we're changing really rapidly and it gives the reaction the chemical reaction in the body a sense of feeling lost and not in the right place and then added on to that when the person believes that's who it is that drama becomes very uncomfortable if that's not belonging to anyone then that doesn't really matter because it's just another appearance appearing in everything but when it's somebody that feels lost and feels a little bit confused and doesn't know its position in the world, then it becomes very uncomfortable and we're experiencing so much more depression than we ever have done. Because, and I think that's to do with the radical changes that we've gone through. Like we're having so much information, so our brains are taking on so much more information. There's all these things that are creating unhappy people. And then along with that, that we are, uh, we take it personally and why I say we're unhappy people it's because um, chemically we're not doing so many things that used to chemically release us pleasure like a big thing of what released humans pleasure was the social side of life 
and living in a community and we're not really doing that anymore even if we live in a city we're kind of changing from being very communal animals to singular animals the same with relationships we're not managing to mate for life anymore we're becoming less more and more separated so we're kind of going through all these changes which are creating uncertain and unsure chemical reactions in the body and then on top of that it's taken to be who you are as a fixed somebody in relationship with life and so there's a lot of unhappy or uncomfortable people out there and it's the combination of the two the person is less balanced than it has been in a long time uh, and less stable even though it's crazy because we're in a society where we're financially more stable that doesn't matter an idea that we're fan financially more stable doesn't matter so we've got that and then we've got this added thing where it, it's this energetic contraction where we think that's us and we think that person's got to be happy and got to live a certain life and got to have certain interactions we're also doing sort of things as well by living in these cities and the transport and the fumes and the food. We're doing many things which will make the body have more, less pleasurable chemical reactions. It's crazy. Like uh, if you, a lot of studies have been made that before washing machines and hoovers, people were actually happier. Like these instruments made people more unhappy, but we believe they make us more happy. But this is talking about happiness, this isn't talking about the end of the contraction of self. We, we've just done things that have made us more unhappy, but we'll go through a change and then we'll be happy to be singular apple, animals. We're just going through a change. It's an uncomfortable change there, you can see it in our cities. And then our food, jeez, what we eat. I just have to go and correct Khaleesi, she's just barking at somebody. Right. One second. You see? You'll never guess what she caught in the garden a few nights ago. I should have got it on camera. It was so funny. She caught a hedgehog. But <laughs> it was so it was funny because she thought the hedgehog was attacking her because every time she tried to bite it, she would get like cuts all over her face. So she was like, ah, and she was going mental, but she couldn't really bite it because every time she went to go towards it, she got the thorns in her face. And it made her go absolutely mental, like if she was fighting with another dog. She thought the hedgehog, I think, was like uh, biting her or something. So the hedgehog was fine at the end, just Khaleesi was injured. Right. It was very cute. Do you have a... You're coming, you're coming to the States next year, right? Yeah. To Isabel's, is that right, on the yeah. West Coast? Yeah, in March. Do you know when that is, March? March the... Um, just let me look. I think it's March the, uh, March the, um, second till March the 23rd. So it's so three weeks. So I'll be doing talks in LA for the first weekend. And then I think a bit of a retreat near LA and then talks in San Francisco. Then I go home. That's all. Very cool. Yeah. Great. Cool, Lisa. Thank you uh, for um, calling or taking my call. My and, pleasure, um, Bradley. It's great seeing you. Enjoy the sunshine. Bye. Okay, bye. Oh, I'm coming on the third. Hi, Lisa. Good evening. No, that intro has not started. But whenever you're ready, have some questions. Huh? Have to disappear. Okay. Hey, Maria. Hi, Lisa. Hey. Hi. Hi. I, I can't see you, but it's oh, okay. Oh, hang on a sec. Let me just uh, correct that. Yeah, I can see you. Yeah, hi. Hey. 
And how are you doing? Yeah, good, thank you. How are you doing? Yeah, I'm, I'm fine, actually. But, yeah, fine. Uh, it's still... Um, the person still trying to catch something, trying to uh, hang on something to feel, uh, like, more comfortable. Yeah. But it, it can't. It will it try, though. Hard. Yeah, it's right. Something tries all the time, catch hold on something. Yeah. It's like, it can just be, and then... But you know the person that watches that, that too is the illusory person. Yeah. It's so crazy, isn't it? So even yeah, the person that knows that is the, the one that wants to get somewhere better. So the one, the, so even the one that thinks that it knows its own unenlightenment also is the one trying to get to enlightenment. So it's like it, whatever it says is totally unbelievable yeah <laughs> it's like you're getting left with nothing nothing no just bite yourself oh that's all you can do uh, and uh, but it's it's going to be the words you're saying it's called beyond something it's so yeah it's still the person right I but it is still, it's like the person see, thinks it can see and understand Lisa's words, but in the instant that they're being spoken, it's not the person that's listening. The person thinks it's listened, but listening doesn't go in time. Looking doesn't go in time. Speaking doesn't go in time. The person's lost in time. So it then thinks it understands. I heard Lisa. I understand. I can see I'm a seeker and I want to get this. And then that, that, that's taken to be who you are but in every sound and every sight in every instant it's totally free and unbounded without boundaries so it doesn't matter if contraction is here it's it's free anyway right yeah, yeah. but it doesn't always feel that way there's yeah. ways in which the person can make itself feel better um and these are like scientific ways, I don't mean religious or spiritual ways, like uh, um, there's m many people don't even know anymore because we're going through such a shit change in humanity of what m gives them pleasure. Yeah. And the simple things that can make the body-mind mechanism and the illusion of self more even and balanced, which can tidy the cage. I know that doesn't sound very appealing, tidy the cage. Yeah. But sometimes it does get itself in a um, an uncomfortable way because it keeps trying to find freedom and keeps repeating very ne negative patterns by yeah. trying to find freedom. It's it's, it's uh, like uh, nothing doesn't matter anymore. It's like. Mm, but that's the person taking that on board. That's not true for the person. That's the person trying to be enlightened. Things do matter to the person, and that's got to carry on even after waking up happens. Survival matters. Hunting for a mate. Sex matters, I'm sorry. Food, eating matters. But the person tries to be liberated, and it tries to clear, clear itself of the movement towards pleasure. And then it tries to take on the mentality of non-duality and say nothing matters in the the the, the body mind mechanism world or the, the the human world things do matter family matters lovers matter friends matter happiness matters but that's not non-duality but when the person tries to identify with non-duality or use non-duality as um, a way to enhance its depression then um, life becomes very uncomfortable this is nothing matters only in the sense of non-duality not for the person the person can't say nothing matters if the person saying nothing matters then they're not talking about non-duality they're talking about the person things do matter to the person I adore Khaleesi and I would I would um I would most probably throw myself in front of a car to stop her being run over, not because I'm a nice person but because there is such a sweet bond between us my Bodies most probably responding to her like a child, and there's there's great effort that gets put into Khaleesi. I buy her very expensive food. I cycle with her for two hours a day, one or two hours a day. Um, I I take I take the anger sometimes of the neighbours if she doesn't because we live in a small 
where their neighbours can hear things if she doesn't yeah. behave herself when we're out. Um, if nothing mattered, then I wouldn't walk the dog. I wouldn't, um, on the human level, there wouldn't wouldn't be the effort that I put into my relationship with Paul um, of... Uh, you know, cooking him nice meals, or uh, I do his washing for him sometimes. Not very often, though, but I do do it sometimes. <laughs> um, <laughs> um, or uh, um, what else? Or he's gonna he's gonna build me a wardrobe. These are terrible. These things. He's very sweet. He's gonna make me a um, a wardrobe. You know, we ordered this flat pack wardrobe, yeah. and so he's gonna construct all, which is gonna take him hours. But but that that in the world of the person pleasure does matter the movement towards pleasure and pleasure is found in many things in relationship and music in all these types of things when the person tries to become non-duality they do get themselves into a form of depression because they begin to believe that nothing matters as a per on a personal level and then they think everything's pointless everything is pointless it's not going to get you to oneness everything is but pleasure is nice yeah. It's much nicer having a tasty meal than a meal that has no taste at all. So that on that level, and people are often mixing together non-duality and the personal, and then it gets all very confused. Yeah, I got it. I, I just don't know anymore. Yeah. The thing is, I, I don't know what to say. Yeah. But I know it is, it is here. But uh, I just, I can't tell. <laughs> I lost the words. <laughs> yeah. I can, ha I can sometimes have that effect as well. I bombard you with so many words. It's like... <laughs> yeah, it's like I'm drowning. <laughs> yeah, it's beautiful. Nice. It's beautiful. Yeah. yeah, it's such a beautiful subject. It's so beautiful. It's like, uh, sometimes it's like, uh, but nobody understands, but you're, uh, yeah. And uh, it's, 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 uh, it's like, uh, it's not happening at the same time, you know? Yeah. But it's happening. It's happening, no? Yeah. Nothing. Not really. I know. Yeah. <laughs> so. Oh, well, lovely to speak with you again, Maria. Thank you so much, Lisa, for your work. Thank you. Thank you so much. Bye. Bye, Hermesin. Bye. I just have to pop to the toilet. Hey, Phyllis. Hi, Isabel. Not second, not the third. Still working on retreat. Hi, Julie. Hi, Carl. Hi, Lisa. Hey. Great, thank you. Um, yeah, so my question is, as I, as there is this um, kind of openness to whatever is happening, less of this sense of there being a, a sense of, I guess you could say, resistance to what's happening, I just find that there's this almost consistent pain that keeps coming through like a mix of emotional and physical pain that's just so relentless. Yeah. And was just wondering if you can speak to that. 
And it's a pain in your um, torso area? It can be torso and, sh and shoulders and sometimes headaches and sleeping problems and just exhaustion and all sorts of uh, physical symptoms. Just give me a moment. I, sure. It's not coming quickly. Hang on, I yeah, just realized sure. I can turn my video on for you. Oh, yeah. What would be the best outcome of me, of, of what I could say about it? <laughs> <laughs> That's a good question. Um, I guess it's just how, how can I find peace with, with this pain, you know, this, with the experience of pain and I'm looking for some, I guess, guidance or some words that might um, help me be at peace with it because I'm, I'm completely clueless for, yeah. or I'm, I, I know that it's, it's just pointless to try to get rid of it or to try to try to solve the pain. And, and I'm just struggling to make peace with it. Yeah. Or I don't know, is that even maybe too much to try to do, to try to make peace with it? Like, is that too much of a, a doing, you could say? Um, that's, uh, um, it's just about to come out, sorry. <laughs> sometimes, sure, sure. I don't, sometimes, my, it just takes, it's like, it can be felt like words are just, do -bo -bo. Just coming. Okay. <laughs> On the, um, the level of you becoming at peace with it, there's many things that you, the, the illusory you, could do in order to make things better. Um, the, none of them can be guaranteed because the nature of life is to always move and to not know the outcome. But there's many things the person could do to make itself feel better. Just like building a house, there's, there's good ways in which to build a house. It's the same with the body mind mechanism robot of the human there's ways in which more pleasure and more pleasurable sensations um, can be an outcome so if you if you say 
eat unhealthily, it's more than likely going to um, create a less uh, happy instrument. But then if this has anything to do with non-duality, but this is just talking on a personal level for the person. So if you eat healthily, then most probably that will make more pleasurable chemicals and it will make all your organs and everything run smoother. There's, um, there's Chinese medicine and ac acupuncture that will help um, on the nervous system and help relax everything. There's massage. Um, there's drugs, drugs that you can get to the doctor, but that's my least favorite out of all of them. Um, there's many things. Creativity, music, art helps produce more pleasure in the body and more relaxation, less work, less stress, less living in a city, countryside, nature, animals. This is, it's interesting to hear you say all that because it's sort of like I've in some ways, I've almost tried to ignore all of those solutions because it, I guess what I was thinking was that's just more of, more of the ego, you could say, trying to reach for pleasure as opposed to awakening to, you know, that the me that is not affected by the kind of comings and goings of pleasure and pain. Yeah, that's a misinterpretation of non-duality. <laughs> Sorry. Huh. No, that's great. I'm I'm really glad to hear that. <laughs> that you know, I'm, um, this, that's really helpful. Then it's not the person that wakes up. It's not the filter that actually wakes up. But most speakers speak as if it's the filter that wakes up, and the filter's got to be a certain way in order for the light to fully shine through, or for the light to wake up again, or for aliveness or beingness to wake up again. And so a lot of the time when they hear the description of non-duality or they hear non-duality, either the speaker or the, sh the, the one that's listening interprets it as something it's got to do, enlightenment or waking up as a personal thing. And it often becomes very unhappy while doing this mm. because it ignores the human. It's like, it's like my, me asking my dog not to be a dog. And of course, it's going to become unhappy if I put my dog just in a tiny little box and I expected it to not want to run and hunt and to eat flesh then it's going to become a very um, pain, painful body for that dog. It's going to be a very painful body like the dog's going to be in a lot of pain hmm. because the dog's going to be wanting to run it's going to be, it can't know it because the dog doesn't have an intelligence like a human so we often get into, like, I don't know what, who or what you've been listening to. We get into this idea of believing it's us that wake up. And then the, the, the illusion of self separates into two. And then it, it, the illusion of self looks at itself from another illusion and judges its own enlightenment. And then tries to make it enlightenment by doing certain practices and certain things or certain ideas like even non-duality ideas. So if it feels angry with its girlfriend, rather than expressing its anger, it starts repeating the story, there is nobody, there's nobody here, there's nobody at home, there's nobody there. It tries to not be a human anymore. And it yeah, becomes a yeah. very unhappy human. And it's not, it's not just you, Carl. Like it's, this, is, this is what happened with the Lisa story. It's what happens with n most people when they begin to hear this message, partly because non-duality, a lot of non-duality speakers mix the two and they tell you it's a personal enlightenment and partly because it's the nature of what the person will do. It will try and embody what it wants. So it will try and embody enlightenment. So it will try not to be a person. It will try to be the absolute. <laughs> then you get speakers like Jeff Foster um, or other speakers that go through that and then they start to abandon the absolute and tell you how you've got to be fully human because because that trap happens so many times and um, and it's not then they tell you they like a or everything that everybody speaks has its pros and its cons and when a person hears this message it's um, it's always going to be interpreted as personal. So even if they hear Jeff, Spot, uh, Jeff Foster start saying, oh no, you've got to be fully human, then the person will still develop this spiritual ego and try to be fully human. They will still try to be sync, and it, it can't help it. It's what it does. But it does make itself very unhappy in the process of it.
because it tries to to be something and rather than it trying to be successful and trying to be uh, have lots of money which in a way is a more natural thing than trying to be enlightenment enlightened so rather than it trying to get money and be a successful f person in society it's then trying to be enlightened and actually trying to be enlightened is more neurotic than seeking for money it's worse <laughs> yes it's yeah. a worse thing like Ramesh used to say if you get offered enlightenment or if you're going for enlightenment on money go for money <laughs> because enlightenment, at least like money is like a thing, although money's fake and it's not really real, it's the way that our society works in order to survive and survive luxuriously. But it's what we're naturally programmed to do. We're naturally programmed to hunt and to survive. But we're not naturally programmed to be enlightened. <laughs> the human's programmed to be a human. That's got nothing to do with the human enlightenment it's got nothing to do with the human world so the the human then interprets enlightenment as it interprets hunting for money as it yeah. interprets hunting for a lover or hunting for a house and then it tries to emulate that with enlightenment and the worst thing about enlightenment is enlightenment's not like money or a house you can never get it at least with a house or money you can I know it's not ultimately real but you can kind of get it you can kind of get buy yourself a house or get money enlightenment doesn't exist in the human world the human can't get enlightened it can never get there it's like it pedals on a hamster wheel and the more it looks in a way for enlightenment the more unhappy it becomes because it's something that is totally non-reachable it's really full on you might like um, yeah. it really pops a lot of bubbles because this also really scares the person because the person as it's associated it with money and survival like the only thing it can do is when it hears this it really threatens it because it thinks but if I don't go for this what have I got to do what's my purpose in life the human's purpose in life is to survive and it's got totally confused by this idea of enlightenment the human's purpose in life is to move towards pleasure and I'm not talking about a hedonistic li lifestyle. I mean, in a way, there is only a hedonistic lifestyle because whatever the person does, even if it seeks for enlightenment, it's moving towards pleasure. But that's not exactly what I'm talking about. I'm not talking about drugs and drink. and um, But I'm just trying to point out that it's not the person in any way that gets enlightened. But while we've been talking, Carl, the person feels that it is the one that heard Lisa and it even might be the one that's looking at Lisa but actually total freedom hears Lisa total freedom sees Lisa and it's not even something that hears or sees Lisa that's separate from Lisa it's all one thing actually the, the, like the hearing and the seeing of Lisa is one and the same thing the, the looking um, no sorry I just got confused because I lost your little your pager. So the looking at Lisa and the seeing of Lisa is one thing. The hearing and the the, the hearing and the heard of Lisa is one and the same thing. They're all it, it's like right now, this is total freedom experiencing itself. But only in this instant. It's got nothing to do with a person getting to enlightenment or a person trying to fix its pain. It's only in the instant. This sound of Lisa's voice is total freedom. This sight of Lisa is total freedom. And that's actually the experiencer. What is, what's happening is the experiencer. And it's always free. It's everything and no thing. And it's happening and not happening. It's in movement and perfectly still. The illusion of self believes that it's something moving in time that will get to enlightenment. And it tries to become enlightened and it tries to take on enlightened qualities. So the illusion of self tries to not have desire, tries to not have pleasure, tries to not move towards things. But that, that illusion of self, that character which has claimed to be the centre of the world, is designed to move towards things. But what happens is not the end of the character, it's the end of that one that's claiming it to be someone rather than an impersonal functioning happening. So you know that person that says that it can see the pain and it can see itself, um, its awakening, that too is an appearance happening in this and in no way talks about enlightenment. 
As soon as it goes in time, it can't talk about enlightenment. So the person that says, oh, I'm, I'm more happy or I'm more free now or I'm less free now or I'm more contracted, I'm less at peace with something now, is an appearance happening. And that, that appearance can never find freedom, can never look for freedom, because that appearance is simply an appearance happening now. And the freedom is everything. The freedom is it happening, not where it thinks it's going. <laughs> What, what comes to mind is this sense of, you know, after so much inquiry, after so much uh, of this questioning of everything, you know, I, I don't even know how to be human anymore. Yeah. And yet, as you're just saying, though, that's yet just an appearance right yeah. now. And even that one that doesn't know how to be human is an appearance in this and the freedom actually is it all happening and it's the end of that energy sticking to that as being an experiencer that one that says I don't know how to be human anymore it's like all of that can play on but that's no longer the experiencer of life that is an experience happening in life it's more than likely though the questions about enlightenment and not enlightenment will begin to fall away but the human is a very simple instrument. Um, it works like any other animal. It's, ama it's amazing how this is, becomes so abstract in the human. It just it moves towards pleasure. And what it finds pleasurable is um, eating, sex, and shelter, like warmth. It's very simple. And, um, and competing with its... Um, with other humans. That's not an ego thing competing. It's very natural. Dogs do it. All other animals do it. It enjoys competing. It enjoys um, having competition. But none of it's really real and it's not going to make you more valid by being the, the one that wins the race. Um, and creativity. The human has a brilliant mind and can create. So, But its creation is always about um, survival, so it's plays, it's films, it's art, it's always about moving towards pleasure even though it doesn't realize it. So like um, in films and in TV what we love about it is watching how the person deals with problems. So in every, I don't know if you know how TV is, um, or films are set up, um, I sound like I know so much but I, I, originally my career was in playwriting so the way that films are set up is, um, or a TV show, if you have a TV show, in um, like a 40-minute TV show, you'll have four arcs. And what an arc is, is where um, a life, a, a challenging situation is presented. And what we're interested in as viewers is seeing how that person deals with it. And this is how we keep and stay interested in TV. We think it's it's and it's about challenging our ideas but improving our survival chances by doing it just like my do dog watch it loves watching the birds and the ducks on the lake we live on the lake um because uh the movement and the urge is so much about killing she can sit and watch the movement of these animals endlessly it's a great pleasure it's the same with us and television we love watching how people do deal with difficult situations because it helps our imagination grow. We love storytelling for this fact because our whole society is based on storytelling. So these are all things that we enjoy and it's a very simple formula to be happy. It sounds, it's not complicated. We think it's very existential being happy, that we need all these things or, but it's not that we need all these things. What, what happiness in the human world is, is simply the ability to move towards pleasure. That's all the human wants. It just enjoys that movement towards pleasure. It doesn't even need to be the top provider or the top getter. It just enjoys being creative and moving towards it. But when people are on the enlightenment path and the enlightenment story, they try to not move towards any more pleasures and they become incredibly depressed. It's like putting, it's like putting a, um, a dog in a box for its whole life and saying <laughs> it, can't, it just gets fed and it can't do anything. Yeah. 
<laughs> so, um, so that's all the humans set up to do. And it's not set up as a really nasty animal. It's just it will step on, step on other people to get more pleasure. But it's not really nastily. It's also empathetic. It's a, it's quite a nice animal. <laughs> we do bad things when we don't see it, but that's because we can't imagine bad things happening to, like, all of our clothes. Most of the people listening are in Western worlds, most probably, and all our clothes are most probably sweatshop clothes. And it's not that we're nasty that we do that, but because we don't see it, we can't relate to it and we can't produce um, the imagination of how bad that is. But if we saw somebody working in a sweatshop and we actually went and visited, we wouldn't be able to do it. We're not nasty, we just can't imagine what's not in front of us very well. Like things like that, we can't imagine empathy very well. A little bit, but not enough to stop us doing it. So we go to our supermarket and we buy food that's from animals that are very badly abused, but we if we actually saw the animal being abused in front of us, we wouldn't eat it. 90% of us or 95% of us wouldn't eat it. <laughs> we have a niceness about us, although we are predators as well. We do kill. <laughs> so this, it may sound like just a ridiculous question, but there's just this sitting with like, I just have no clue what to do anymore. <laughs> like, yeah. I mean, hearing hearing that response I, or hearing what you shared, I, I really enjoy it. it. It resonates as there's something that feels so true about it. Yeah. And yet, I'm there's just the sense of I really, I must have completely missed it somehow in this. No, whole well, in one way, but also waking. Also, there is going to be. The identification of a person is has got a weight to it. Like I mean, that's uh, that's not deniable. When you believe that you are a limitation, it always does feel slightly caged. So it does. It's never gonna. It's always gonna be caged to the person. But um, but basically, in that cage, what the person wants to do is be creative, and it wants to be creative about moving towards pleasure. But isn't that in some ways? I guess I guess I've been so conditioned in my spiritual search that I, the, I think of that as almost just like a distraction. I no, think. that's really beautiful. Would you want the flower to? Would you imagine? This is where I get annoyed with other speakers, because imagine saying to a bird, "If you want to become enlightened, you must stop flying." <laughs> imagine saying to yeah. a flower, "If you want to become enlightened, you must stop growing towards the sun." It's like a cruelty. And then, yeah. and then what they also say is that they also say that's your ego resisting. And the reason you're in so much pain is because your ego is in resistance. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and so you're trapped to this group because you always feel like it's your ego which is reacting. Um, but but I'm, not, I'm not denying the fact that the illusion of self is a cage in itself. But... And that d does become very weighty for people and it becomes hard to manage because it is going to always feel tight because it's a lie. There's not somebody actually experiencing life. But that person cannot take on non-duality. There is nothing it can do which will make that person closer to non-duality. So all this spiritual stuff about trying not to crave for pleasure or go towards pleasure, in one way... There is truth in it because when when you feel that you're a separate self, pleasure seeking is taken to the extreme and the person believes that the next pleasure will satisfy me forever. And that's not true. Pleasure is pleasure. It comes and goes. That's what the human does. Its occupation is to move towards pleasure. But you're never going to find God in a pleasure. You're never going to get to a pleasure and be like, oh, this is it. But that's how the human set up is to think the separate self believes that it will. So in that way, like it says, you've got to stop craving or they say you've got to so stop seeking for pleasure. And it's not seeking for pleasure. It's that one that believes it will find God in the next pleasure. But that one that feels like that cannot stop by its own effort. It will mm. stop when you, as existence, decide to stop playing that game. <laughs> It can't, it can't, you can't, 
sit under a tree and force it you can't stop seeking for pleasure and make it happen you'll you'll make the body mind mechanism more uh, depressed it's such a tempting myth, isn't it, that, yeah. that I can make it happen? <laughs> because that's what it's like. In the, but in the, in a practical sense, that's how it works with the human. The human imagines something. It imagines how to build a house. It imagines, okay, I'm here. The bricks are there. I put them on top of each other, and I build a house. And that works practically, like with my dog. Let's see this. Like with my dog, if she gets her ball trapped under the worktop, I can lift up the worktop to get the ball, whereas she would just sit there for hours trying to get it out. So we have these brilliant imaginations, but what, what that person does, and this is the bit where it gets really depressed, is it imagines enlightenment as a thing, and then it imagines that it can move towards it. But, in, but enlightenment isn't actually something you can move towards at all, at least with building a table or a house or walking the dog. There can be a movement towards that. But you can't move towards enlightenment. Enlightenment is. And life will stop playing this illusion of separate self when it stops playing it. Oh, that's brilliant. It is really brilliant. And everything is totally free, even when it feels like it's not. It, like it is really really beautiful it's just that it well, it's, uh, existence wants to have the experience of a separate person at the moment of a separate person looking for enlightenment <laughs> and that's who's truly listening now and truly oh. looking it's not something far away from you it is existence it is what is that's what what is is playing <laughs> and there's very oh, simple ways in which to make the person happier my boyfriend talks about it in Dutch he just talks about the, the simple programming of the human being or what the human being likes is creativity. Is it likes being social as well, it's a social animal. Um obviously having a stable um um environment. What's it called? Like a stable um a home, like stable security, um stable home, I suppose. Um and it likes um uh obviously being fed well like a lot of us eat loads of junk food which makes us really tired all the time or makes people really tired all the time so sugars really like sugar all these sort of things aren't the best way to go but that's just on a the 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 human world and then girlfriends or boyfriends whichever way uh those sort of things and not all bodies are the same it varies in each one but we're not that complicated we're animals just like dogs and cats and wow thank you lisa this is my pleasure really carl helpful. i really appreciate it <laughs> nice thanks carl thanks take care bye Hey Michael, nice to see you again. Okay. Abby. Hello. Hi, Abby. Hey, hi, Lisa. How are you? Yeah, good, thanks. How are you doing? Yeah, I'm doing fine. Uh, okay, uh, so thanks uh, for these forums. I mean, these are really good. My pleasure. Uh, what, what generally happens is I have your book, so you know, sometimes I just randomly open a page and read it, and and I have questions, and I noted that I've already probably asked you a series of questions <laughs> in this calls. So, so I wait for the next uh, uh, stream. So, uh, yeah, so I have, I have some questions and I'm always uh, happy with myself to know that the questions keep changing. <laughs> <laughs> it's not the same question <laughs> and I don't want to call it progress because that would be, <laughs> that's not allowed here. <laughs> anyway, uh, uh, so what I was, I, what I was really uh, fascinated with uh, in the book is, 
and probably I also asked this question before I, I didn't quite get it is I felt like I was getting to understand uh, uh, beingness and aliveness that you talk uh, at least theoretically like I can imagine okay what you're talking about when you give the metaphor of uh, the the light and the characters in it and how the character thinks it's separate but it's actually all light so I, I get that but I always kind of start thinking is this aliveness is a is the property of the body or the property of the the person so when the person is born just by the nature of it the aliveness comes into being no but um but i can i can understand how that interpretation happens because it does seem that way like um like it becomes it's so close these two things existence and the the because existence is looking through a body mind mechanism it does feel like existence belongs to that person like i exist i am alive Right, right. But right. it's it, it's something that will become really apparent that there's nothing outside of existence and everything is existence and everything's made of that and it was never a character or a body that heard or felt or saw even though it was looked through that instrument it was always existence and that 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 is happening right now like this is existence looking at Lisa it's not even looking at Lisa the looking is in the picture of Lisa on Ustream in the computer there's not actually something separate that looks at her there is simply the picture appearing and then the, this existence is seen to be happening and not happening so the back of existence is non-existence whereas yeah. the person holds up non-existence as something to be afraid of I will not exist but actually mm. non-existence is always present it's the source of everything. Is everything? Yeah, I, because sometimes when you speak, I there are a couple of moments when I totally kind of get it, and yeah. but it's like then there's I try to figure okay what was that it's because it hits sometimes pretty pretty hard, but then you lose that connection. Well, because where you did once. Well, it's actually happening opposite to what you think. What's happening is that when you hear me sometimes when I'm speaking. Mm -hmm all sense of somebody listening drops away and then everything is known and it is as it is but then the person comes back and tries to get that and mm -hmm. then the person thinks I heard it and I understood it and it was something intellectual whereas this is totally unintellectual and it's an abs this is a, not intellectual it's an absence of something and this is known already this isn't something you need to be taught it's just this veil has become so strong of the illusion of self so when you feel like you got it, that's the aftermath of the person coming back. There was a moment where it was just known. Everything dropped and it was just known. And then it was simply this. Then the person comes in and goes, hang on, what? And it does feel like maybe a bit of a brown, um, a fog came over because you can't quite remember what happened and you're trying to scramble back to something. Right, right. And yeah, along the same lines, I mean, the same question is when you say there's existence and non-existence at the same time. Yeah. So, it's, so I don't quite get it in the I sense. Don't. Yeah. I can understand in terms of existence, okay, they, everything is existence. Probably it's easier to imagine for a human or for a person, but. When, when you say there is non-existence and existence at the same time, I don't I don't understand the negative word non-existence okay. here. Well, can oh. there be movement without stillness? Can you see movement without stillness? Mm. Right. <laughs> <laughs> like um, you th there has to be both. Existence is happening with exist. Like it's happening and not happening. Just like sound can only be heard with silence stillness yeah. can only be uh, movement can only be seen with stillness like everything's happening with both right so when you say existence and non-existence it's really in terms of the the way they're positive and negative words and they cannot exist without each other yeah uh, since they do not make any sense no but the way i imagine it is like non-existence probably if there is something then it's also part of existence I mean, everything is that. Yep, non-existence is yeah. present in existence. Right. And then existence is present in non-existence. They go together. But you as a person cannot see it because you as a person are set up to see ob subject-object. Mm -hmm. So the body is designed to see 
um, objects, but it just becomes apparent when life stops hiding that this is happening and not happening. This is and isn't. This is moving and not moving. And no matter how many times you have said that the person cannot understand it, no. so it's hard to stop not trying to get you, it at some level. No, and you don't need to get it. It's it's happening beyond you getting it or not getting it. Because because the getting intellect comes and goes. If you had your brain, if you bumped your head, you would forget it. Right. So it's really not to do with the intellect. It's something waking up that's always been there. Yeah. And probably my effort to understand is probably so that I can carry that understanding and feel good about it, probably. That's, probably, but also yeah. that's the side effect of what happens in the human. It always claims things. So yeah. there is, there is, this is being heard and then the person wants to hear it. So this is being heard beyond the person and then the person wants to hear it. The person yeah. wants to feel like it got its money wor money's yeah. worth. <laughs> yeah. Exactly, it's got. Yeah. It's always got to stick its little nose in, but it's yeah. so sweet. That's what it does. But then the whole time that's happening, it's always happening in perfect, brilliant stillness. It's always happening in this as this. Yeah. And yeah, there's I nothing that can die. You can't fall out of existence. Like we mm -hmm. think that we can fall out of existence. We think that we're separate objects that can fall out of this. Mm -hmm. You can't ever fall out of it. Like the back of this, like is non-existent. So everything is made up of non-existence. And before, when you think you'll die, you think you go to non-existence, but you can't. They're they're uh, dependent on each other. Mm. Okay. Ah, yeah. It's so <laughs> magnificent, and what a play it's doing! It's the most creative play there is. So I mean, uh, when you say. Okay, um, so the separate self that, uh, that that you talk about, it's kind of aliveness playing the game of uh, being separate and trying yeah. to find itself. It's as I think people talk about it. So there is, then that's what's happening, right? I mean, the sense that's what it is. In the sense, it's not really bad or good. It's that's what it is. But but when exist when existence is found, when there is, you say, I mean, when there is awakening. I mean, why is awakening a preferred state, or why do people look for awakening when, even when, when, even when it's being said that it's the same aliveness playing the game of a separate self, and it's the same aliveness that stops playing it at one point? Then why, why is that state seems to be attractive? I mean, why is why am I not satisfied with the answer that okay, it's uh, it's beingness playing a game of a separate self? Okay, so that's that's fine as well, but I that somehow doesn't seem to stop yeah. the seeking in some ways oh. uh, I don't really know how it's all set up I look at it like existence wants to express every possibility and it mm. wants to express the possibility of people looking for itself again because mm. you know because what, what happens is when identification starts which is quite early on, is the separate person, so the separate self starts, and then it believes that pleasure is freedom. And it, it moves towards pleasure, but it can never feel satisfied by that movement, the separate self. Mm -hmm. right. it, it never can feel, it because pleasure comes and goes. Mm -hmm. You have it for a few minutes and then it's gone. And then it thinks, well, that object wasn't it. Let's move on to the next one. And then so it constantly goes through life feeling a little bit disappointed because it's been sold the idea that it will one day make it. Mm -hmm. But you can't ever make it with terms of pleasure because pleasure comes and goes so so that's it, so that game goes on and then it begins to hear about enlightenment if that's the destiny of the body mind yeah. mechanism and then it imagines that enlightenment is this perpetual state of pleasure right, right. so then it tries to become enlightened so it can maintain constant pleasure it doesn't actually want constant pleasure like that's that's not actually what it wants but it, yeah. it begins to get into that imagination that one day I'm going to be enlightened and I'm going to feel immense amount of pleasure all the time everything's going to be pleasurable yeah. it doesn't it doesn't want that what it wants is freedom from that original sense that there was something lost 
Right. And that's how I imagined, actually, constant pleasure. Yeah. Uh, oh, that's the only way the separate self can imagine it. Imagine, right, that's, right. that's how it's set up. It's set to, to hunt towards pleasure. So the only thing that it can imagine enlightenment is, is pleasure. And it's not actually pleasure, although in awakenings there can be immense amount of bliss released. So it's very, very pleasurable. But it comes and goes because that's a chemical reaction happening in the world. And something that we all know about the world is that everything is always changing. So those chemical reactions will always change. But so a lot of people get very confused by awakening and they think it's the bliss, but actually what's right. happening is that that this is stopping being subject object. It's stopping happening to someone. Mm -hmm. And that's the true freedom is when this no longer is happening for someone. It's happening but not for anybody. And that's always been the case. This has been happening and not happening simultaneously. Mm. But the 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 person believed it was really happening and that it needed to get pleasure before it died. It needed to get there before it died. And it makes this really intense game, which can be a lot of fun, but it can also be quite heavy because it become pleasure becomes so important that the person becomes sick by trying to seek for it. Mm -hmm. right. And can can we talk about a little bit again about aliveness in the sense that when when your book like you mentioned uh, is on page thirty six that aliveness is prior to I am the body, so it does not stop or start or stop anywhere. I mean, does it mean that if, if, does it does that mean like everything is aliveness in the sense that before let's say my body was born or yeah. Yeah, uh, it was in some form of other energy. Now it's, it's no. got converted or to a, let's say embryo was formed, and now it's, it's like a human body. Now it will then it will get destroyed, and it will be part of the earth. So is that yes? I think it's getting converted into one form or the other, and then the body comes into the picture when it's born and says, "Okay, it thinks I am born. It thinks I this is my life." Yeah. Is that how? Okay. Yeah, um, but actually existence is there prior to the body. Now, what, what I mean by existence is, is what is. So, in, so why it gets confusing is because existence is looking at what is, is looking at itself through a body-mind mechanism. And then this identification comes with feeling, thought, taste, touch, Mm -hmm. sight and hearing and thinking. I think I don't know if I said them all or too many. So it begins to identify with all of that and it always looks at existence as if um, that's somebody experiencing it, that those six senses equal somebody's experience. But all those six senses are constantly changing. Mm -hmm. They're constantly in movement. That doesn't equal anything. That equals appearances happening. But the commonality in all those appearances, in all those combinations of experiences, is that it is. But that is has no color. Okay. Colors appear in it. Like, so it's not just seeing or just feeling or just a heart sensation of love or just pain or just pleasure. It's all of them, but none of them. Isness is always changing. Existence is always changing, but it always is existence. Mm. So uh, when you talk about the senses, like uh, existence is looking through the body mind mechanism using these senses, yeah. and what some. Uh, some people talk about like uh, even if you take uh, some non-dual teachers who are considered to be purely non-dualistic, like like say Tony Parsons, or I mean, they mention that like what what happened to Tony Parsons was that like he was walking and uh, uh, I think he mentions in his book that he was just at one moment he forgot everything and started looking at his walking. So just the the sense that the to the touch sense, I don't know what sense is that, uh, skin or whatever. So, and that, okay, what I'm trying to say is probably, is thinking kind of the secondary sense and uh, 
touch, sense of touch is primary? Like no, no, no. There is no sense that the most important one. I would say the strongest one, most probably, is in the hum is is in thinking. We've got such active ability to think. When when I mean to say strongest, in the sense that the most uh, closest the to existence creates, creates the least image of that person. Like if I think, then I'm thinking as let's say as a person in time. But when I'm touching something, drinking something, then I'm probably getting a break of that image and all that whole cycle. So Not necessarily, because if touching is as if somebody's touching, then it's still identified. Like, it feels like somebody's touching. Really, the, there is no body touching. So it's not like one is more identified than the other. Mm. So it's not like... But certain meditations do recommend, like, no, no, not the meditations recommend thinking about something. They recommend, okay, um, feeling the air or like listening to the no, body. Or something. No, no. It's easier to get lost. That, but that's just, that's just somebody doing that. That might make the person more peaceful. Mm -hmm. Like, um, so when the person's like really suffering, if they were to, 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 to put the focus on, like a tree or something in the flow, it might make them more relaxed or the breathing, but that's got nothing to do with the, it's not happening to someone. That's another action happening to someone and someone doing. This isn't this isn't got a center. Right. Okay. Like it it can't. It's not the same as like um as someone being in the moment. Like the thinking and the character can still carry on. The character that's like, oh, what shall I do this moment? What shall I do next moment? Oh, I've got to walk the dog. I've got to speak to da, da. So all of that can carry on. And it, But it's when it stops happening to somebody mm. that the freedom is. It's nothing to do with any activity that the person does. Because that's always about things. That's always about something being more it. So, so what I'm trying to probably find is a synonymous uh, event in the human life which is closer to uh, the experience of, or not the experience, but okay. oneness. So, for example, if you are watching a movie and you forget that you are watching a movie, you as a person, yeah. you get lost in it. So, is it like that is? You could say because it's not really happening to one because you're so lost. Yeah. And only after you come out of the movie, you realize okay, you enjoyed the movie, and then you. Have adjectives and but then if like you that. went back in with that movie trying to lose yourself you wouldn't yeah trying does not work but it's just that if it happens by itself so it happens it does, yeah you know, like it can yeah. happen in these talks but really nothing can give you more existence ultimately existence okay. is no matter where you go it's just that somebody thinks that it's happening to them this energy says it's happening to me okay yeah fine. Um, and uh, along the same lines on aliveness is uh, you also mentioned is in the book probably yeah when the shift happens everything awakens in the sense the person gets lost so basically it's is it like the existence does not experience through the mind body anymore or there's just no, there, it does make experience through the body mind mechanism but there's nobody in relationship with anything mm -hmm. anymore so everything is it the character oh. carries on but there's nobody in relationship yeah it's actually very hard to imagine that the character carries on but without any relationship to anything it's because just not the center of the world anymore there's not anybody in relationship with anything anymore the character is a part of everything like it always was Okay. Okay, I think uh, that this was really good, Lisa. I, I don't think I have any questions. Oh, nice, Abby. <laughs> Thanks a lot for this forum. Thank you. It's a pleasure. Thank you. Bye. I have some other people asking um, for uh, to speak, but I think that's enough now been speaking for quite a while um, so this is it
this, this. Um, there'll be a talk on Sunday uh, at 6 p.m. Central European time. So this Sunday there will be a talk. And then after that, I'm going to Ibiza, and you're more than welcome to join us, but there's no internet there to uh, to stream. Okay, guys, thanks. Bye.